Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn parallelogram law, and also we are going to learn how to solve a numerical using the parallelogram law. So first of all, we'll go through the statement. If two forces acting at a point are represented in magnitude and direction by the two sides of a parallelogram. Their resultant is represented in magnitude and direction by the diagonal of the parallelogram drawn to the common point of two forces. So this is the general statement of uh, law of parallelogram or parallelogram law. Now what we'll do is that we'll try to check out how actually it works. So we'll go with an example. Uh, now before that, you should be knowing. That a parallelogram law is applicable only for two forces. So in the previous videos, we have learned what is triangle law. We also saw a numerical on triangle law. So as like what triangle law is applicable for only two forces. Similarly, even parallelogram law is applicable only for two forces. So now we'll assume that at this particular uh, what is my quadrant system two forces are acting we we'll assume this as one force we we'll call this as Q this as another force P so these are the two forces acting at one common point which is forming a concurrent force system so now this is X axis this is Y axis so these two forces are acting at a common point now to find out resultant using parallelogram law, what we have to do is that we have to convert this two force system into a parallelogram. Now, how to convert this into a parallelogram? Now, we all know what is a parallelogram. Uh, the opposite sides are equal and parallel to each other. So, for that, now this one side, what we are called as Q, we have to draw a parallel line to this. Similarly, this P side will draw a parallel line to this. And now this intersection we have got. Now this is what is forming a parallelogram. Now, what is our result? So if we we'll check out the statement that if two forces are acting at a point, so these are the two forces acting at a point in magnitude and direction. And now if they are represented as two sides of parallelogram, and we are converting them into a parallelogram. Then in this case, the resultant is the resultant is represented in magnitude and direction by the diagonal. Now here for parallelogram we have two diagonals, so we can draw one diagonal will be likewise, another diagonal will be likewise. So the diagonal which comes out from the common point of the two forces will give your resultant. So this is the common point of the two forces P and Q. So this is what is your resultant direction or representation. So this will be R and now the direction of the resultant should be towards away from the common point. So this is how it gives us that the resultant is moving in first quadrant. Now if you make a mistake in showing the direction of the resultant, you will get that resultant is moving in third quadrant which is a wrong representation. So always take care that the direction of the resultant should be away from the common point. So that the diagonal that you are drawing, the direction you should be showing away from the point. Okay, now further, there are some other common terms uh, that we will go into. The angle between the two forces, that is the two forces for which we have find out the resultant, is called as alpha. Why? The angle between R resultant and P force is called as theta. Now, here, what you can say, uh, for P force, it is coming along x axis but always it will not be so this theta is not the angle with this, uh, angle of r with respect to x axis take care of this the theta is the angle between r and p force so p force your yeah, luckily it is along x axis but always you may not have p force along x axis so again i will repeat alpha now this nomenclature alpha theta doesn't matter you may call this as theta you may call this as alpha but while putting down in the formula you have to take care of so this is alpha now we are called as the angle between p and q theta angle between r and p now to find out this resultant 
we have a formula r is equal to under root of p square plus q square plus twice p q cos of alpha and now if we we'll check out if you know p if you know q and if you know the angle between the two forces so here we have termed it as alpha you can call it as theta but you should take care you can call it as beta gamma whatever but cos of whatever angle you are taking here that angle should be the angle between the two forces which are given so now here we have considered as alpha so if you know alpha and this to p and q we can find out resultant similarly this is one more formula tan of theta is equal to q sin of alpha upon p plus q cos of alpha now from this particular formula what we get is theta now what is theta theta is the angle between r and p force now we'll try to apply this logic by using uh, uh, going up with a particular numerical and we will try to understand how actually it works so we will assume that we will go with a two force system because as parallelogram is applicable for a two force system so we will assume that here there is a force of magnitude 5 newton and we will assume that its angle made with respect to x axis is 20 degrees and then we will assume that there is one more force moving along first order whose magnitude is 10 newton and it makes an angle of 70 degrees with respect to x axis so this is your x axis this is your y axis now to find out the result what we have to do is that we have to convert this into a parallelogram how to convert this into a parallelogram so draw the for this 5 newton you, uh, here we have two sides 5 newton and 10 newton so you have to just convert into a parallelogram by drawing the uh, parallel lines to each other so this is the line that i have drawn parallel to it and for this 10 newton i will be drawing a line parallel to it so now we can see now this is what we have converted into a parallel graph where this side is parallel to this and this side is parallel to this and here we have got an intersection point so now our resultant is so we have, we have already gone through this resultant is the diagonal of the parallel graph one of the diagonals of the parallel graph which comes out through the common point of the two forces so here we have these two forces and this is the common point of the two forces so now your resultant will be this one this will be your r and the direction should be away from the common point so now this is your resultant moving in first order now to find out this resultant what we will do is that we will consider one of the force as p other force as q now it's in it's what about what we consider we can even consider this as p and this as q now I assume this as p and this as q so now this assumption whether you are assuming this as p or this as q that will not differ your r value but that will change your representation of theta value so we we'll just go on through that also what actually, how actually it differs so now right now we assume this as p this as q so already we have gone through the formula, the formula is r is equal to out of p square plus q square plus twice pq cos of alpha. So now what the value of p that you have assumed is 5. So 5 square plus q is 10, 10 square plus twice 5 into 10 that is p into q cos of alpha. Now here alpha is the angle between two forces that is p and q. So here I will write down here alpha is nothing but angle between two forces while theta is angle between r and p now the angle between two forces comes out around so this is what we want 
70 plus 20 as 90. So, you have to put down alpha as 90 degrees. So, now once you put down all the values, the resultant value that you will get is, now already I have solved this, so I know the answer, it will come around 11.18 Newton. So, for this, the value of resultant is 11.18 Newton. Now, we have got the magnitude of resultant, but still we have to find out its direction. That is the angle made by the resultant with respect to x axis. Now, for that, we will check out what actually we want is this angle. Angle made by resultant with respect to x axis. But now, the formula that we have is tan theta is equal to q sin alpha by t plus q cos of alpha, where this theta is the angle between r and t force. So, if you will use that formula, you will be getting this theta. But now, once you will get this theta, you know this is 20. So, theta minus 20 will be getting the remaining angle. So, now, if we will check out, uh, so if we will check out here, uh, this is the formula, tan theta is equal to q sin alpha by p plus q cos of alpha. So, here q is 10 sin of alpha, alpha is the angle between two forces that is 90 upon p, p is 5 plus q, q is nothing but again 10 cos of alpha, alpha is 90 that is angle between two forces. Now, if you will use this particular formula, you will be getting the value of theta and theta comes around 63.43 but now this theta is not the theta with respect to x axis of the resultant it is the angle made by resultant with respect to p force now what we want is this particular angle now for that what I do is that we have to subtract this this is what we have got as 63.43 now to get this 63.43 minus 20 you will be getting the required angle with respect to x axis made by the resultant and that is 43.43 so finally this is how your resultant appears r and this is theta where r is 11.18 newton and theta is 43.43 degrees. So, this is your final replacement of a two force system, a two force system into a single force system. Now, the change that we are talking about here, I assume P, here, I assume Q. Now, in any case, if I if I assume this as P and this as Q, then the theta that I will get it will be with respect to this that is r and p if this is p and then to find out this theta 70 minus this will be getting the required angle with respect to x axis for the resultant so i hope that you all have understood this particular numerical thanks for watching it